Our next talker, uh, speaker is Nicola White, who will be talking about reptile ownership, the scale of the problem. So something a little bit different for people who are used to cats, dogs and horses. I love cats, dogs and horses, but I also love reptiles. Um, I work at the RSPCA, I'm the senior scientific officer, the specialist on exotic pet um, trade and uh, keeping. Um, so one of the, species, one of the um, animals, types of animals that I work on is um, reptiles. Um, the worry is that there's been a, a rise in the number of people who are keeping reptiles. Um, as you can see, the Pet Food Manufacturers Association statistics show from 2008 to 2014, the amount of animals that are now being um, kept roughly, obviously. Um, the scale of the problem, sorry, pardon the pun, for the RSPCA is uh, that uh, from 2011 to 2015, the number of calls that we received to our cruelty line rose by 33%, and more importantly, somewhat, for the RSPCA, the number of animals that the inspectorate collected has ri had risen 16%. Now, that is of particular concern for us, particularly as you, as you look at the RSPCA's animal centres, where we actually only have one that has purpose-built facilities to take in reptiles. So it's a massive problem for the RSPCA, and we need to look at why it's happening. So here are a few case studies um, from animals that we have collected, and they're very sad case studies. Top left, you can see this is actually a vivarium um, containing a dead corn snake, and this was just about three weeks ago. It was found in an alleyway, um, someone called it in, and unfortunately by the time the officer arrived, the snake was dead. Um, it's actually a completely unsuitable enclosure as well for the animal, and whether or not it died right then and there, sorry, before being dumped or afterwards, we don't know. Um, top middle, kind of standard situation, it's a Burmese python, it's an enormous snake, and it's stuck there in a tiny enclosure. Bottom, these two bearded dragons were dumped in an alleyway, uh, sorry, in a stairwell in London. Bottom left, this is one of 24 reticulated pythons in a case that we picked up. You try rehoming 24 reticulated pythons, particularly when they've never been handled and are really, really aggressive. Um, this is a Euromastix dumped in a park, and top right is a red-eared terrapin, which are um, co commonly seen um, being dumped and abandoned around the country. Um, so what are we doing about it? Well, like um, the uh, theme of today, so basically we need to understand why this is happening. And the problem um, we think comes um, mainly because of the type of people who take them on who are the more casual owners. So these are the people who um, may have just decided, oh, I quite fancy getting a reptile. Their mate might be giving them away. Um, mate doesn't want it anymore. Um, and they acquire it sort of by accident or without much thought, really. Um, so we need to know who these people are because there's absolutely no point in us bringing out information um, if we're not actually targeting it to the right people to make that human behaviour change. Um, there's absolutely no point in us also trying to speak to these people in a way that, that's not being received. So do these people um, use social media or would they prefer to read a pamphlet? So what we're trying to do is we're carrying out research at the moment um, to find out who these people are and map the journey they're taking to buy this animal or acquire it. So we want to know who they are, what species they're looking at getting. So is it the more commonly kept species that you might find down the pet shop, or is it a species that you're more likely to find online? Where are they getting their reptile from? So online is obviously quite a major problem when it comes to the reptile trade. Anyone can buy pretty much anything. Try Googling it. It's really quite staggering. Um, uh, we want to know why are they getting that particular reptile? Is it because they think it's cool? Is it because they think it's quite easy to keep? Um, do, do they think it's cuddly? Some people do, believe it or not. And how are they obtaining their care information? Is that before they get the animal? Is it afterwards? Who's it from? Will they listen to the RSPCA at all or would they prefer to speak to somebody who's in the trade? We need to know all of this before we can make any change at all. There's absolutely no point in us going into trying to provide information and change behavior without understanding these people. So we've, we've, we're looking at a, an iterative method, um, which means that we're, we're going back to the method all the time, refining it um, at each stage of the process. And we're using um, a research company to help us with this. So what we're trying to do, it's, it's a non-traditional immersive research method, such as mystery shopping. So what the, what the company are going to be doing is um, looking at, um, they're actually going to be going online as if they were going to be buying this animal. They might go into a pet shop. Um, 
They are, as I said, an iterative method to allow the refining of ideas, and we're using a defined sample. So the whole point of the, the basic research behind um, before starting the study is so that we can pinpoint who to speak to, because obviously there's, there's certain people that keep reptiles, there's certain people that keep dogs. We want to focus in really on those people that not only keep reptiles, but are the audience we're going for, and that's the casual owners, rather than the enthusiasts who might be more likely to do their research and speak to somebody before taking on one of these animals. So. What we're trying to do, as I said, is build a model of casual reptile ownership. So we want to understand what these people are doing, how they're going about getting this animal, what the process is. And to the point of this is that we then want to be able to identify opportunities where we can jump in. So we want to be able to know where in this process could we maybe give them a little bit of advice about whether or not a, a pet is, is ideal for them in the first place, whether or not the reptile is a good pet for them. And if they decide, yes, it is, then get some information to them about the particular species. Um, we want to pinpoint where we can influence good behavior, um, highlight any key welfare concerns. So is there a particular kind of concern there? Is, it, is the enclosure not big enough that they're choosing? Um, is it, is it particular, are they going down the route of getting a more dangerous species and should we be pointing them towards one that's more achievable to look after? And um, we want to know how to communicate with these people, whether it's through social media, leaflets, etc., and whether or not they will even listen to the RSPCA in the first place, in which case we need to work in partnership with other organisations. That's, that's everything that we're doing at the moment. Thanks very much for listening and for having us today. Thank you.